as I was watching Tar, the first half of the movie, I, I was really nervous, which is stupid and, and lame of me to think and say, because I still think it's a great movie in the first half. But for the first half, I was really trying to think of a way to say, this movie is great, it does everything right, and I will never watch it again, and it's not gonna be in my top movies of the year. A big part of what makes a movie great, or genre-defining, or generational, is its rewatchability, for me at least. And this one didn't have that at first. And then the rest of the movie happened. And yeah, it's amazing. See, I start the clock. You know, my left hand, it shapes, but my right hand, the second hand, marks time and moves it forward. But I guess I should have kind of establish the story here to, to give a better synopsis. The, the general story is about Kate Blanchett's character, Lydia, or Linda, I can't remember, Tar. She's a composer working with the Berlin Orchestra, one of the most prestigious orchestras in the world. She's one of the most prestigious maestros in the world. She, they say at one point she's won a Tony, an Emmy, an Oscar, and something else I'm forgetting now. She's one of like 15 people of all time to win those four awards. She's incredibly smart. She knows her history of being a maestro. She can like intellectually destroy people really easily and she has charisma she has a lot of charisma and for that first hour or so it is just establishing that character and what she's doing in her daily life she has an assistant who is a aspiring conductor she has some colleagues who are also aspiring co conductors and they all want her advice on things and she's like oh you know Figure out your own way. Don't be a robot. You do your own thing. I don't read reviews, yada, yada, yada. And she's kind of this person to aspire to be. And all of these people around her aspire to be her. She's incredibly smart. She's incredibly informed. She seems like she knows exactly what she's talking about at all times. She makes firm decisions. She's someone that you would want to be. Or, and that's the, how the movie paints her. And then the second half happens. And you go, yeah, maybe not. And it is very obvious to anybody paying attention that the fall is coming. It's all about a, a fall from grace, really. That's the story, is the character on top of the world, on top of her profession. She's incredibly talented at what she does, and there's these awesome sequences where she's leading the orchestra, and she's so into it. Kate Blanchett absolutely kills this role, and it's it's great. So there's kernels early on of this fall coming, and the fall does come when it's revealed that Krista, this person that was emailing with our main character, Tar, killed herself and was blacklisted from orchestras for something that Tar did to her. She held her back in some way. It's not explained, but she get, she kills herself and accusations come out that Tar groomed her, essentially. And you go, I looked up to this woman. And again, she, she talks about not reading reviews. She talks about all yada, yada, yada. And then it's revealed later that she does. She goes on social media, she sees things about her, she reads stuff about her, and she's kind of a manipulative, narcissistic, and conniving person that is just in it for herself. She's a grade A sociopath, which to be this good at a profession, you kind of have to be, unfortunately. You have to walk on people. You have to step on people to get to the top of where you want to be. And in order to get there, you really have to not care about the people you're stepping on. Tar began her career with the Cleveland Orchestra, Chicago Symphony Orchestra, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, until she had last arrived here at our own New York Philharmonic. Why did they play the Blair Witch sounds from the end of the Blair Witch Project when What's-Her-Name is screaming for Mike? And that's one and that's another really interesting part of this movie is her sensitivity to the smallest noises. She is when she's berating that one guy in that 16 minute one take, he's constantly like shaking his leg up and down, clearly anxious about being attacked by her his professor and she like grabs his leg to stop him one of her assistant conductors constantly clicks a pen and she keeps stealing it from him so that he won't do it and then there's other quieter moments when she wakes up in the middle of the night and hears a me the metronome going off from like four rooms away or a slight humming in her fridge and I, it feels like this is 
unrelated to anything. But to me, what I got out of that is that she's so focused on these tiny details and insignificant things in her life that she completely misses the big picture. And the big picture is what eventually is going to destroy you. So if you're so focused on these itty bitty things that are completely meaningless, like a metronome going off or a hum in a fridge or a ticking sound, you're going to miss a lot of life. If you're hyper focused on these things, you're going to miss big things. You're going to miss red flags in your life that could eventually lead to it unraveling. And I found that very interesting. There's a lot of great sound design in this, which is why the Blair Witch Project sound is so weird and kind of off-putting because the rest of it is so natural and perfectly done. Everything about this craft-wise is absolutely flawless. The cinematography, the color grading, I think is a touch dark at some points, but great other than that. The direction, the editing is like incredibly precise. Every cut is like, oh dude, that was a great cut. But it's also that perfect type of editing where you don't notice it sometimes. And that's exactly what an editor editor should be. Unnoticed, but brilliant. And that's perfect for this. The craft is so good, which is why those little moments kind of stick out to me, like the Blair Witch Project and the, the weird maze thing. It started to feel like prisoners, like these weird red herrings that go nowhere because there is no major like mystery or story here it is just a character who gets on top of the world and loses it we have a problem i received another weird email there's no reason to get caught up in any intrigue but man there's a lot to love about this and i, I will say it is so quiet and it is so slow it's such a slow burn that it's going to be difficult for a lot of people i think to get through this but trust me if you can stick it out, it is an incredibly satisfying and rewarding watch that has so much to say and so much to communicate to the audience. I think it's worth it. I think that two and a half hour runtime that can be very intimidating is incredibly worth it. And that first hour, that first act is intimidating because it is so slow. But Man, it's setting up those little kernels, those little itty bitty pieces. And once you finish this movie, if you can stay off your phone and just sit through it, I guarantee you'll want to watch it again. I guarantee it. So I give this a nine, really. I think the second viewing of this will be better. I really do think that. But I'm not sure I'll ever get over the Blair Witch Project sound. I don't think, I think that is still going to be really weird. But if I can get some clarity on the maze thing, and maybe a couple other things. I think it could be a, a perfect movie. I think other than that Blair Witch thing, it's basically a perfect movie already. I just need some clarity on things. So, yeah, fantastic. Check it out.